What time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit my subscribe button. It's right down there. Hit that little subscribe and it's time to follow my Instagram, Geekly Amanda, G E E K O I Amanda. Same on Twitter. And it's time to get this reaction video started. So this week has been the Democratic National Convention. If, if you all don't know anything about it, this week is when like the Democrats nominate their pick and the pick for VP and have people coming on to talk about, you know, the, the, the VP choice and the presidential choice for the Democrats and, and all that good stuff, right? We got to see some great speeches. Can I can I give a shout out to my girl Michelle Obama who I love who had me in tears the first night had me in tears last night um, our vice or our president um, Obama talked Barack Obama spoke and and he, I mean he he brought it last night but I wanted to highlight because I mean we're looking at all these people that we know and have been in the in the presidential seats before the first lady they've brought in all Clinton spoke and Hillary spoke and all them but Camilla Camilla gave a speech and let me tell y'all I thought last night I was going to be in tears listen to Barack Obama talk I thought that is what was what's going to have me in tears last night but it wasn't mm -mm. he he fired me up he inspired me. He motivated me. He he talked about our our democracy on the brink of collapse due to this presidency. And and listen, I'm 100 percent in agreement in that, and have been saying this from the day Trump got elected. But still, I was I didn't cry one single tear when I heard him spoke. When I did, it was when I heard Camilla spoke. So this reaction I've already watched, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little challenge this time. I'm gonna listen to Camilla speak. Our our hopefully next vice president of the United States, and I'm gonna try not to cry. This is a try. You know how they have those challenges? Try not to laugh. Well, this is a try not to cry challenge. <laughs> All right. And I mean, it hits even home every more because you know I love my Bollywood, my Bollywood fans, and my Bollywood base, and my Indian culture, and all that. And her being half Indian, her mother being an Indian, Tamil to be exact. You know, she even gave a little shout out to her aunties, the word in, in Tamil. So I remember that from last night and I was like, this, this woman right here speaks to me. She's an American going to be in the vice presidency, but half being of Indian culture, which I love, which I feel a connection to, which I feel part of my soul is almost half, you know, maybe not half. But I'm just saying, I have that connection and that and that and that bond to the Indian culture as well. So that her being in in this seat, uh, you know, on possibly the next vice president of the United States and being half Indian, it inspires me and it, it just let, let's just get let's get her speech started because I can go on and on and I already have y'all ready, go. Greetings, America. It is truly an honor to be speaking with you tonight. That I am here tonight is a testament to the dedication of generations before me. Women and men who believed so fiercely in the promise of oh. equality, liberty, right? and justice for all. for all. This week marks the 100th anniversary of the passage, passage of the 19th Amendment. And we celebrate the women who fought for that right. Yes. Yet so many of the black women who helped secure that victory were still prohibited from voting long after its ratification. But they were undeterred. Without fanfare or recognition, they organized and testified and rallied and marched and fought, not just for their vote, but for a seat at the table. These women and the generations that followed worked to make democracy and opportunity yes. real in the lives of all of us who followed. Yes. They paved the way for the trailblazing leadership of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And these women inspired us to pick up the torch and fight on. Yes. Women like Mary Church Terrell, Mary Cloyd Bethune, 
Fannie Lou Hamer, and Diane Nash. Constance Baker Motley. I don't know those and people. The great Shirley. <laughs> I should, I guess. I guess they're we're not prominent often figures. Taught their stories. No, that's what I'm but saying. But as we're Americans, not. we all stand on their shoulders. Oh. And there's another woman whose name isn't known, whose story isn't shared. Another woman whose shoulders I stand on, and that's my mother. Shamala Gopalan Harris. She came here from India at age 19 to pursue her dream of curing cancer. At the University of California, Berkeley, she met my father, Donald Harris, who had come from Jamaica to study economics. They fell in love in that most American way while marching together for justice in the civil rights movement of the 1960s. In the streets, of Oakland and Berkeley, I got a stroller's eye view of people getting into what the great John Lewis called good trouble. When I was five, my parents split, and my mother raised us mostly on her own. Like so many mothers, she worked around the clock to make it work, packing lunches before we woke up and paying bills after it's we like went to mama. bed helping us with homework at the kitchen yeah. table and shuttling us to church for choir practice. Mm -hmm. She made it look easy, though it never was. My mother instilled in my sister Maya and me the values that would chart good at this. the course <laughs> of our lives. Cry. She raised us to be proud, strong black women. And she raised us to know and be proud of our Indian heritage. She taught us to put family first, the family you're born into and the family you choose. Family is my husband, Doug, who I met on a blind date set up by my best friend. Family is our beautiful children, Cole and Ella, who call me Mamala. Family Mama. is my sister. Family is my best friend my nieces, and my godchildren. Family is my uncles, my aunts, and my chitties. Chitties. Family is Mrs. Shelton, my second mother who lived two doors down and helped raise me. Family is my beloved Alpha Kappa Alpha, our divine nine, and my HBCU brothers and sisters. Family is the friends I turn to when my mother, doing good the most important no person in my life, passed away from cancer. Oh. And even as she taught us to keep our family at the center of our world, she also pushed us to see a world beyond ourselves. She taught us to be conscious and compassionate about the struggles of all people, to believe public service is a noble cause and the fight for justice is a shared responsibility. That led me to become a lawyer, a district attorney, attorney general, and a United States senator. That was, and at that was every hard. step of the way, I've been guided by the words I spoke from the first time I stood in a courtroom. Kamala Harris for the people. Oh, I can't do no more. I can't do no more. I failed that challenge. I failed it and I failed it hard. But I did better. Last night I was in tears, ugly tears. And when she, what, what is it cut The chitlas, the ch ch chitty. Wow. This is, she is the representation of what the U.S. has become as far as inclusivity. You know, she is a woman, a woman. She is a half black woman, the other half an Indian woman. I mean, just her, the com combination of, you know, representing so many uh, minorities in this, in this world, but having this representation in, in government, in our, in our White House, it's just such a powerful statement. 
And when she talks of this and talks about, you know, we're using the words, you know, the I keep saying the chit the chitlies, the, the t I know it's Tamia, that means like the, the ants in Tamia, but that just hit me hard too. Oh, I was it you should have saw me last night ugly tearing now because like I said, my love of Indian culture too is run strong through my veins. So when she also represents that along with what representing part of me, part of being a woman in the U.S., it's just a powerful statement and uh, it tears me up. I did better though. I did better. I think last night I started crying from the moment she was like, hello. <laughs> I don't even know if she said hello, but I was like, oh. <laughs> and it was hard to follow the act because she followed right after Obama. So that's a tough thing to follow. And I think she did great and and I enjoyed getting to know her because I really didn't know much about her before this. I didn't. I didn't know much about her. I was like, it didn't, you know, she was what in California. So it's not like we pay attention to every single government official in every state. So the more I learn, the more I'm inspired and, and motivated and, and I just have hope right isn't that the slogan when obama was running his hope and i and i again have have hope and excitement that this world this country can rise up again and, and be the great country it it, it was I, you know <laughs> can be respected again in the world and can be you know a uh a powerful influence for other countries we can lead in things like science and actually have people that believe in science and not be the best at spreading viruses but containing them and and finding you know cures for them and, and vaccines and treatments and we can be looked upon again with respect which we don't have now not even you know, from the outside looking in, no respect, but also from the inside looking in, <laughs> you know, those of us that are in this country and, and watching what's going on and, and cannot believe what's happening and, and lost all respect for it ourselves. This gives us hope to have a respect for our country again and, and, and keep democracy alive. As Obama said last night, like he fears for the democracy in this country. And I do too. I think he spoke of what many, many of us worry about last night. It's not something new that he has spoken about. It's something that has been going through all our minds and why it hits so hard. So I guess you know my choice. <laughs> I guess you know my choice. People might not agree. I've been in many arguments, especially the recent months, where people, just, they, it's hard to explain. I, I'm, sometimes I'm baffled. Sometimes I'm baffled, like, things that come out of people's mouth and what they actually believe and, and say. And I'm like, have you been paying attention? Because they'll be the first ones to be like, oh, that's fake news. Don't trust the media. Don't trust this. Don't trust what they say. And they'll be the first ones yelling that. But then they are believing the stuff where I'm like, are you, how are you, how do you not see what really is going on? Do you really, like you scream fake news, but it seems like you aren't paying attention to real events. You can just watch things live and see what happens. You can watch the president now speak live and things come out of his mouth. And, and you can't deny that. I think you just ignore it or, or watch those news stations that like to pick and choose different little parts that he says and, and put it together to fit their own little, you know, agenda. Because that's the only way I can explain it. So they, they want to call fake news and everything, but their news source is correct, which I'm like, if you were paying attention at all, other than your one source there, if you're paying attention at all, watching what's happening, watching the world, watching things that are happening, I can't see, I just can't see how they can just turn a blind eye to that. I can't. So here's, here's to God bless America because <laughs> we need all the blessings we can get right now. 
And I'm not saying things are, but people were like, well, what's Biden going to, I'm not saying Biden and Camilla's going to come in and be these saviors and we're going to get everything we want. You know, we're going to be like this great country and have Medicare for all and all this. I mean, I know it's still a lot of corruption in Washington. I'm aware of this. You know, these politicians that have been in there that have, you know, these li lifelong politicians only care about getting reelected a lot of the times, you know, I'm aware of this. And that was the only thing I can say that the first time around when people were voting for Trump that I can understand about it. I'm like, okay, you're right. He's not a career politician. He's not one that's been in office and has been corrupted by all these politicians and all this stuff. You're right. But he's much worse. He's much worse. And I just hope they see that before it's too late. Well, I'm sorry for the downer. <laughs> I promise, I promise I won't be too political. <laughs> I promise I won't have, be too political in all my videos, but this is something I feel strongly about. You know, the Black Lives Matter, Lives Matter issues I spoke out against, or not against, but I mean for, spoke out, was an activist. I was, I was at the protests and things like that. I'm very, I feel very strongly, uh, you know, using my platform to speak on issues I believe in. And I feel very strongly con to continue it and, and support people, politicians that I think can turn the downward spiral our country is in. I mean, at least bring it back to where it was before. That's all I'm asking. That's why I was like, you know, we can, we can, then after this election, we can discuss, okay, let's third party votes and things like that. We can discuss it, but we can't discuss it when it's going down like this and about to hit the rock bottom. We need to at least bring it back to where it was before and then start making the big the big jumps. You know, I was a Bernie supporter. I'm all for Bernie and the AOC <laughs> as as VP. AOC as VP, you know, I'm all for that. People want to say, oh, you're socialist in this. I just think, you know, a country should take care of its people. A country shouldn't have the top five richest people owning 90 something percent of the wealth, the top 10% owning 98% of the wealth, while the bottom 2% is struggling, while the bottom like 50% is it, it can't, you know, pay their bills or, or can't pay it, afford to have, be in the house they live in. In a country where we are supposed to be this prosperous, you know, great country full of wealth, which we are, the wealth is distributed to the top while the bottom is suffering. And it shouldn't be that way. We can do better, right? Who said that last night, Camilla? What did she say? I gotta, I'm gonna end it with her words. Cause she said, let me, I wanna say, I'm gonna bring it up because I wrote it down and I wanna get it correct. But that's uh, uh, from her speech and I didn't even get to that last night, but from her speech, we, she said, we can do better and deserve so much more. And this right here, it's 100% true. All right, y'all. Let me know what you think. Comments, thumbs, all that. Till next time, take care of each other.